I'm gonna be talking about binder jetting, but it, it is also known as powder bed and inject 3D printing. So basically this is uh, a process which is basically pretty much like the normal inject printers, but instead of using ink, the head of the printer uses a glue to glue together the, the powder. So the machine sets a thin layer of powder, the, the head of the machine uh, jets the the glue uh, layer by layer and then the supporting platform lowers uh, by the thickness of a uh, of one of those layers and the process is repeated until the the piece is complete uh, depending on the materials materials that you are using also uh, the process is followed by uh, a, a treatment of heat to cure the the glue so uh, some of the uh, of the pieces that you get out of this process are not treated and if you don't get a, a, a treatment after uh, that uh, the mechanical properties of these pieces are really low like some of the tensile uh, the strengths that i read were about 45 uh, 35 uh, megapascals um, the process itself all, uh, does not use uh, big amounts of heat, so there are no uh, residual stresses in the part, which is an advantage for uh, for the process. Uh, and I saw, for what I saw, the materials that are used are uh, goes from ceramics, composites, glass to metals such as aluminum, silver, stainless steel, uh, some copper alloys also. Um, for my cases, case studies, this part was made to the, uh, here I'm confused, I read the US Navy and then they also described that as the Naval Undersea Warfare Center. This is a case where they used uh, reverse engineering to design this part from a uh, pump that they had and they needed to re-elaborate and um, they used this process to print out the, mo the uh, model that would go into the furnace and uh, or to the casting process. Sorry. Uh, the advantage of the 3D printing process here is that normally the order would take 51 weeks to be received, and uh, the cost was about thirty thousand dollars. And using 3D technologies, uh, the the order was uh, done in eight weeks. So we went from one year to two months. And um, in this case, uh, they are, this is, uh, I, I made a mistake in the first paragraph. In this case, this, uh, they were using the, this technology to print out a whole part, not the mold. And um, here they are designing processes um, for different laboratories. And um, they are, ref the, the beauty of this is that they are reducing the prices of these processes by 10 times. So they are going from $1,500 to $150. So I saw two companies that work with this technology. This The first one is 3D Systems, although they don't mention uh, working with metals. They just mention working with uh, particularly uh, plastics. So it was uh, founded in California, but now the headquarters are in South Carolina. Uh, that's the website, although it's not really visible there. Um, and some of the machines that they have, they divided them in through into three categories, which are personal, professional, and production. So um, what I what I'd like to highlight about this is that uh, they have machines, uh, printers for out of selling for a thousand dollars and uh, the precision that they can get with the for instance project 1200 is uh, about 30 microns the second company that i saw which was the recommendation that you guys gave me is uh, x1 which is located in the outer part of pittsburgh um, those are the three types of machines that they have they also divide the, the their machines into three categories, which are production printers, prototyping printers, and research and education uh, education printers. So, um, 
in this case, the, what I, I'd like to highlight is the type of materials that they use in the process, which, for instance, the research and education printer uses uh, stainless steel, bronze, iron, tungsten, uh, and glass. The price of those, all of those printers is unknown and you have to send an email to, to ask for it.